Wonderful. Sorry about that, everybody. Unfortunately, the uh, battery's run out. So uh, I'm going to have to pick it up from here. Um, so stagnant water can be very dangerous for drinking. And stagnant Christians can be dangerous as well because what flows out of them will ultimately be harmful simply because what they will be investing in people's lives will be something less than the very best that God has for people. So we need to avoid becoming stagnant. I said that in New Jersey, they passed a law where they stamped bottled water with a two-year sale-by date. And then they discovered that actually it was irrelevant so they took it off. But the people didn't like the two years not being on and so complained. And even though it doesn't have any bearing on the reality of the quality of the water, the fact is that they put it back on again. So there's a two year expiry date on water. Bottled water can, after six months, begin to break down the composition of the plastics. So the water wears away, the chemical reaction wears away the inside of the bottle to the point whereby after six months, not only are you drinking water, but you are drinking a kind of stagnant water. You are drinking particles of the plastic in the water. It's not harmful in the sense that it would kill you, but who wants to drink water with plastic in it and more to the point the taste of that water begins to deteriorate as well. Now this woman knows that she is an outcast in the eyes of the Jews. She knows that she is um, not considered to be anything significant and as a result of that this woman is defensive in regards to her approach to Jesus. She reacts to him. She doesn't respond to him in a warm, friendly way. I was at the beach the other day. People walk past you, they smile at you, and you smile back. Not this woman. This woman was reactive, defensive. She was not wanting the reality of this conversation to go anywhere, really. She was just about getting her water. So she's defensive in her response to Jesus' question. She is uncooperative as well. She wants to not respond to him in a particularly enthusiastic way. And you get that in life. People who have been hurt, people who have been wounded, will react to you, will not respond to you, because they're working out of hurt. And they think that if they keep you at arm's length, then they won't get hurt, they won't get damaged anymore. In fact, there's a whole lot of people in this world that are walking around with walls and barriers all around them, signs saying, do not trespass, do not come in, do not enter, please stay at the gate. But we as Christians have been called to impact the hurting. We as Christians, in the name of Jesus, as messengers of God, our Father who is in heaven, have been commissioned to proclaim a gospel to those types of people. Jesus said himself, the person who is sick, they don't need a doctor, it's the person who is sick. He said in the temple, I have come to preach a gospel that sets captives free. And those broken people, those hurting people, those defensive people, those uncooperative people are the very people that God wants you and I to impact. Even though it's easier not to, God wants us to. And Jesus here has given us a perfect example of someone who is hostile to the gospel, even to connect to someone that will proclaim the gospel, and is hostile in regards to uh, any uh, interest in anything that uh, Jesus, who is a man, a Jew, has to say. So know that then, hurting people are defensive and they will be cooperative. And you have to work out a way to enter into 
their boundaries, taking a piece of the wall down at a time. And in this story, Jesus is doing exactly that. He's taken a woman who is not interested into a place where she captures an insight into who he is. <clears throat> These old wounds that this woman has, as, re as, a, as, she, as it relates to her cultural identity, a Samaritan, is, a, is causing her to defend herself against Jesus' questions. And so she pushes him away. But Jesus is at the well of recovery. Now what that means is that he is intending to give her something, even though she doesn't want it. Some people say, you should only respond to the people who want to respond to you. And there is a truth in that. I mean, it comes to a point where someone says, just go away. We have to go away. But we also need to persevere. We also need to press in. And Jesus in this situation shows us an example of how to press in. So what is this woman going to do with her encounter? The first inappropriate act in this conversation, according to the Jewish custom, was that Jesus spoke to a woman. That doesn't happen in that culture. And worse than that, she was a Samaritan woman, and that definitely doesn't happen. And yet here it is happening. And we need to be prepared to break the cultural barriers in order to impact people's lives so that they can hear and see the gospel. So often I've heard people over the years say things like, I live my life to demonstrate the reality of the gospel. Now I believe in that 100%. But there's also a time when we need to give an account of the hope, says Peter, that is within us. And I wonder how many times in your lifetime have you shared the gospel with someone, with anyone, not just the people you don't know, but anyone. I wonder, have you ever shared the gospel? Have you ever told anyone else about this incredible gift that God has given to humanity, the gift of salvation that's found in the Lord Jesus Christ, this gift of God given to save us from judgment? one day when the judgment comes. And the second inappropriate reality to this conversation, as far as the Jew was concerned, is that Jesus being a Jew was prepared to take a drink of water from her cup. He was prepared to drink from a Samaritan woman's cup. That doesn't happen. But sometimes we have to sit with the people we don't like and be with the people we struggle to connect to because that's the only way they're going to hear. Isaiah's told, Isaiah 6, Whom shall I send? Whom shall I send? I remember as a young Christian, I said to God, Father, send me. And I've been going for 40 years, telling the stories about how God has given us this gift of life. For the woman, this day was an ordinary day. Didn't really present itself in anything other than she'd always known every day. She'd go and get the water. She was the water carrier, the water fetcher. So for this woman, coming to the well and drawing water was her daily routine. But there was something different about this day. There was something that would transform and change her whole life. There was nothing routine about this day. And there is nothing routine about encountering Jesus. Can you imagine if that was you at that well? I wonder, how would you have responded? How would you have responded even now? How would you respond? Maybe even as a Christian, how would you respond if you encountered Jesus at a well? But we need to remember that it is in the ordinariness of life that God engages with us. So many people want to walk around, live in their lives, pursuing what we might call Holy Spirit encounters or the spectacular, as I've often called it. But God meets us in the ordinariness of life. Now, if you can learn that lesson, then you've learned a lesson worth learning. God meets us in the ordinariness of our lives. And this woman was on an ordinary journey, fetching ordinary water 
but she was about to encounter an extraordinary God. So don't lose out on the spectacular in the ordinary. Don't wait around for the spectacular. 